Hi guys. Today is a different type of video because today I'm gonna answer all of your most asked questions about me, about me living in Syria. How is the situation in Syria? Why do I live in Syria while I have a Spanish passport? Which is one of the most asked questions I have in my DMs and everywhere, in any platform that I have. It's one of the most asked questions. So let's just get right into the video, shall we? Okay, so the first question is, how is the situation in Syria? The situation in Syria is pretty good now. I can totally say that it is safe now. The only thing that is not that good, you can say, is the prices of things. We're still economically damaged. You can say right now we're suffering from these consequences of the war, you know what I mean? So everything is really expensive right now. And we have sanctions applied on Syria as well, so that's that sucks too. But in general, it's pretty good. Um, life is really good here. And there's a lot of people that ask me, is it safe to come to Syria nowadays? Yes, it is safe. And there's a lot of beautiful places in Syria that you can visit. There's a lot of clubs that you can go clubbing, you know, you can have fun here. Like there's a lot of beautiful places and there's a lot of beautiful activities that you can do here in Syria. So I highly recommend you coming to Syria. Question is, what languages do I speak? I got this question like billions of times i'm not kidding like the amount of people that ask me how many languages do i speak is insane i don't know why you're so curious to know but i speak two languages fluently which is english and arabic and spanish i do speak spanish i understand spanish more than i speak it like if someone sits beside me and starts speaking in spanish i can totally understand what they're saying but for me to speak the language i'm not that good at it like i'm practicing estoy practicando mi español What's my major? I study pharmacy in Arab International University, which is a university in Syria, Damascus, Syria, to be specific. Did life in Syria got better nowadays that the war has passed and things are starting to settle down? Yes, it got much, much, much more better than it was before, thank God. Things are starting to flourish again. We are so much safer now. You can go out whenever you want to. There's a lot of safety right now, which is amazing. If you've ever wondered, should I come to Syria? Just put it on your bucket list this summer. Trust me, you'll have a lot of fun. If you could travel in time, would you go to the past or the future? Obviously the future. I don't know why I got this question like, I think 10 times. There's like 10 different people that typed this question. So I was like, okay, let's just answer it. Of course I will go to the future. I'm not gonna go to the past because I believe that if I go to the past, what's gonna happen, you know? Like, I can't change the past, but I, I'm curious to see my future. I'm curious where I would be, how my life would be looking, you know? Like, I'm curious to know that, so... Future. What's my height? I am 5 foot 7, I think, or 5 foot 8, I don't know. 172 centimeters and centimeters, but in foot, I don't know. Why is Syria so different in your posts? I also get this question a lot because a lot of people get shocked that Syria is beautiful, Syria has a lot of beautiful places and a lot of people think that I'm lying, I'm not, I'm not actually living in Syria which is another topic that we're gonna go through Syria looks different just because I think the media doesn't show the beautiful places in Syria and I'm gonna show you the beautiful places in Syria I want you to know that Syria has a lot of beautiful places, has a lot of beautiful sites that you can visit um, it's not only damaged, yes, there's a lot of areas in Syria that are damaged and there's a lot of places in Syria that are not safe. There's also a lot of places in Syria that are, that are so beautiful, that are filled with culture and we have a lot of like amazing things. I don't know why people assume, actually I do know why you assume that we don't have anything, basically because the media doesn't show the beautiful places in Syria. So that's why I started uploading in the first place because I was like, People don't know what Syria actually look like. They think that it's only damaged and there's no beautiful places. Um, we are not cultured. We don't have fun. We just live in a war. No, it's not like that. It's actually the opposite of that. So yeah. Where would you like to live one day? As of right now, I want to live in Dubai. And for the people that know that I wanted to live in Dubai, I got also questions about why Dubai when you can travel anywhere in the world. I would choose Dubai just because of one, specific reason that Dubai is tax free which means that if I want to open a company I'm not going to pay taxes 
I want to do anything related to business, I'm not going to pay taxes to the government. If I want to buy a house, I'm not going to pay taxes for the government. That's a really beautiful thing in Dubai. So that's why I want to start, you know, in my business era and like start opening my businesses and stuff. That's why I want, I would like them to be in Dubai. Other than that, there's a lot of beautiful places in the world that I would rather live in, you know, maybe that will change in the future i don't know ever plan on going to new york of course yes i would like to visit new york like it's a beautiful city and all of that i think if i'm ever gonna go to the united states which definitely i will one day i'm gonna visit the united states i would probably go to new york los angeles miami hawaii I think that's it like that these are the places that i want to visit in the united states but would i prefer to live in the united states because there's also a lot of people that ask me that and no i do not like to live in the united states i think it's the last option like if it's if i have to like if i am forced to move to the united states because of whatever it is opportunities and stuff like that yes obviously i'm gonna move to the united states but for me i would much rather live in europe or in Dubai. I don't see myself living in the United States, especially in Los Angeles and all of these areas, Beverly Hills and all of these. Like I just, I'm not the type of person for these areas, you know what I mean? How long have you been living in Syria? For those of you who don't know, I was born in Spain. I've lived in Spain for I think seven years, eight years of my life. We moved back to Syria and a lot of people ask me, why did you move back to Syria? It's not my decision. It was my parents' decision. I was still a little baby. I didn't know what was happening. So it was my parents' decision. My dad decided to come back to Syria. So it's not my fault, okay? Do you want to know a fun fact about me? When I was younger, I did not speak Arabic. The only language that I would ever speak was Spanish. It was a struggle for me to speak Arabic. I didn't know how to speak Arabic. I went to school when like when we moved back to Syria and I started going to school in Syria. The teachers really suffered and struggled with me because I didn't know how to speak Arabic. And now I can't speak Spanish, but I speak Arabic fluently. So that's 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 weird. That's really weird. I think that helped me a lot with my like my Spanish journey because I can understand 99.9% .9 of everything, but I can't speak it fluently. But I think that the reason why I understand it is because literally it was my first language. Like Spanish is my first language, which is so crazy that considering that I don't speak it right now. I speak Arabic. 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 I I don't think you're Syrian. I think you're lying. The amount of people that tell me this exact phrase every single day is ridiculous. You don't understand. I don't know why people find it so hard to understand that I am Syrian. I am Syrian. My mom and my dad are Syrian. The comment that I would get is that your English is too good to be Syrian which is offensive, but I'm gonna take it as a compliment, so thank you. Second disclaimer why they think I'm not Syrian is that I don't look Syrian, which is, how am I supposed to look, to look Syrian? I don't get it, you know what I mean? So either believe me or you don't, it's up to you, but I am Syrian. How do you, do you motivate yourself to go to the gym and exercise regularly? Honestly, I think right now it's a habit. I created a habit of going to the gym every single day. So I think that it's part of my daily routine that I do not skip the gym. Before when I started, like when I first started going to the gym and I got into my gym era and stuff like that, um, it was a year and a half ago. It was in 2021 actually when I started going to the gym. And the first couple of months were a struggle because it was a new habit I needed to adapt and especially because it is a healthy habit so you tend to be lazy to do it, you know what I mean? And I think that what motivates me to go to the gym every single day is that I don't see it as the long term, you know? Like I don't see that I need to go to the gym for the rest of my life. If I see it like that, I'm gonna become lazy and I'm not gonna go to the gym. I see it as, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym today. I don't know if I'm gonna go tomorrow, but I'm not gonna skip the gym today. You know what I mean? So I take it day by day. And I think that's what helped me to stay at the gym and not quit going to the gym. 
because I adapted that mindset of like going day by day and not not focusing on the results and like if I have the perfect body or not that helped me also to to build like the body that I have right now like everyone should adapt this mindset of whatever you want to do in life actually like it's maybe opening a business, uploading on, you know, social media, whatever it is, going to the gym. Just say that I'm gonna do it today. I don't know if I'm gonna do it tomorrow, but today I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? When you adapt this mindset, I think that it becomes easier. You, you're not gonna see it as, oh my God, I need to do it for a really long time to see results. You're not gonna look at it like that. So I think that's the best way to look at things, in my opinion. What do you do when you feel depressed? When I feel depressed, sometimes you just compare yourself with people. I think the the reason that makes me depressed is social media. I've come to that conclusion because let me tell you something. One time I was really depressed and I was like, okay, why am I depressed? I like to question myself, you know, like I'm that type of person. When I feel sad, I just like to ask myself, why am I sad? What is making me sad? What is going wrong in my life? Most of the time you would actually be shocked that nothing is wrong with your life. It's literally the same as it was, but the only difference is that you compared yourself with others. You know what I mean? Like I do that all the time. There's always someone that is better than you and there's always someone that is higher than you and you'll start comparing yourself to them and that's when everything gets fucked up inside of your head. You know what I mean? So when I start feeling depressed and I, what I like to do is that I like to look at the bigger picture in a form of, of that, I would say, okay, you're 20 years old you're really young and i'll start looking at the accomplishments that i've accomplished before you know and the achievements and i'll be like you're really young and you have achieved all of these things can you imagine how much you will achieve by the time you're 25 let's say i always like to look at it in the bigger picture i'm like okay now if i quit when you're 25 years old you're gonna regret that you're gonna be like what if i didn't quit the feeling of regret is worse than the feeling of not trying and when that do doesn't work, which happens frequently. I, call me whatever you want to call me. I like to read the Bible. Like that's a habit that I have developed, I think a couple of months ago. If I feel depressed, I would just like grab the Bible and read whatever, whatever I wanna read in the Bible. Or I would just like pray. I don't know why, but whenever I do that, whenever I read the Bible, whenever I pray and just talk to God about my problems, I feel relieved. I don't like to talk to anyone when I'm depressed. That's the thing about me. If I am depressed, like I would be crying my, my eyes out and no one would know. I wake up the next morning, you know, happy and all of that. No one would know that I was depressed. Because I feel like if I talked, you know, to God, like that would make me much happier. I think being spiritually connected with whatever you believe in is really important and it is really underrated actually because a lot of people i don't think i've ever seen anyone talk about these things like you know read the bible or read the quran whatever you want to read and for me i think that it is a big thing so whenever you feel depressed please just try to read the bible or just talk to god trust me with time you're gonna feel so relieved you're gonna be like I am so relieved right now. I don't know why, but like it's it's maybe that Jesus is sending me a signal of like, calm down, everything is gonna is gonna be okay. You're gonna get whatever you want. Trust my time. You know what I mean? And when you read the Bible, you just start reading that God has its perfect timing. He's seeing what you're doing and he's gonna reward you for whatever you have. And it's just like, it's amazing, you know? So yeah, guys, I think that's it. That's the video. That's all of your questions. I tried to gather like the most asked questions and these are the most asked questions that I that I have received so thank you so much for watching this video if you want part two let me know down in the comments and let me know what questions you have for me thank you so much for watching this video I hope you liked it don't forget to subscribe love you bye